As Married at First Sight Australia Season 10 is coming to an end in the UK, I would like to talk a little about what happened throughout the season and why I think that this show is actually really dangerous. I absolutely love watching reality TV and Big Brother is my favourite. I watched Big Brother Australia, Canada, America and I'm going to be watching Big Brother UK when it comes back. Now, Maths is created by the same people that make Big Brother. And I had seen a few clips of it on TikTok and I kept thinking that show looks quite vile. Actually, these people don't look like nice people. But everybody in work kept telling me to watch it and they were saying you'll love the drama. This was mainly because I kept telling them that I used to watch a show called Temptation Island where couples used to go on and then they would be split up into villas with men and women and see if they could be tempted. And I watched it all again and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is so dramatic, right? So they convinced me to watch Maths season 10 and this was the first one I had ever watched from start to finish. And when it started, I didn't realise that they didn't really get married. I thought that the whole point of the show was that they went on and really married these people. So when I found out that it was just part of the experiment, I thought, right, that makes more sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not just going to be so desperate to be on TV or so desperate to find somebody that you're really going to marry them. So now that I know this, I always see people commenting and saying, oh, you wouldn't just marry somebody that you don't know, that's desperate. And I'm like, well, do you know, I, I literally thought the same thing, so it's perfectly understandable. But it is actually just part of the experiment. So they get married and then they move in together, they go their honeymoon and everything, and they basically try the experiment as if they're working their way backwards in a relationship. And it really is quite interesting. However, from the very beginning of this show, there were red flags everywhere. And I'm not just talking about Harrison, I'm talking about the show in general. And when I was watching it, I thought, first of all, there's no way that this can all be real. Some of it has to be staged or some of it has to be edited in a way that makes it look worse than it is. So when the season finished, I didn't want to look up any spoilers or anything, but I did actually, I watched it at the same time as the Australians. So I finished it a while ago. So since then, I had been looking up to see what happened to the cast, who's together now and all that. And as I was looking into it, I realised how bad this show actually is, how fake it is and how dangerous it is. And that's what I want to talk about in this video today. The reason that I originally looked up the cast after the show was because of Jesse and Claire. When Jesse first appeared on the show, I really liked his suit and I thought he was a nice guy. But as it went on, I thought he was sleazy. I didn't like him at all. And I just kind of wanted him off the show. But then when I started to like Claire and they went to the crystal shop together, I thought he was so adorable and I just loved him and I really wanted them to get together like I think most people did. So in the last Couch episode, when they were talking about her coming to visit him and the show really made out as if the two of them had got together. So me being me, I was like, hey, I'm going to look it up and see what's happening, see if they're together. And I was shocked, right? I was absolutely shocked at what I found. Now, as I said, I love reality TV. And I know that it's edited to an extent to give it drama. But this was absolutely shocking, right? It was really shocking to me. So there was an interview with Jesse and he was talking about how Claire was actually a friend of one of the producers or somebody who was on the show. And she was always meant to be on the show, right? So they were always going to edit her to look like the good one, even though she cheated on Jesse, right? But Jesse had said that he applied for the show, but he'd only filled out the application for him, but he hadn't pressed submit, but yet they still contacted him. Now, whether you believe that or not, it's another story. I believe that once you've put something online, whether you've submitted it or not, it can be seen. So, not really sure about that. But he basically thinks that he was headhunted to go on the show. And then he was talking about how when it was coming up to, like, kind of the end of the show and the last dinner parties, when Harrison had said something to Jesse and it looked as if he had kind of changed his mind and Jesse was like, no, it wasn't anything to do with Harrison, I didn't trust Claire, blah, 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 right? And then he says that they had actually edited the show to make it look like he was saying things that he wasn't saying and he says it was like, if you were listening to the sentences, it was like his voice was changing, but like the tone of his voice was changing because they had edited in things that he hadn't said at the same time. And I was like, do you know what? That is absolute false advertising. I understand that reality TV show isn't all real and they do a lot of it for the drama. But it was just shocking to me how bad it was. And I really think that they're going to have to change how they do this. 
Now, you can sit there and say, oh, this is the first season you've watched. It's been on for 10 years. I think they know what they're doing, right? But the problem is that they're actually affecting people's lives. Like, for real, they're really affecting people's lives. Like, they go through all these interview processes before they even go on the show. It's not like you apply, you get an interview and you get on. There's, like, so many interviews that you have to do. So these experts, they, they know what they're doing, they know what they're looking for. They're bringing on people who've got personality disorders deliberately. They're bringing on people who can be easily manipulated deliberately. And what happens if, at the end of the show, two people end up falling in love or one of them is pretending they're in love because they're just a narcissist or whatever, and then they end up in serious trouble? Like on Big Brother in the past, they had two people, they were like chatting each other up, supposedly like being flirty, and the guy had like a knife, right, and he was holding it up to the woman, and it was it was really weird, right, and he got called to the diary room, and he ended up getting chucked out of the house, and years later, the two of them ended up in jail. Now, I don't believe for a second that the people who went through all the interviews didn't know that the two of them were not right in the head, and it's the same with us. I know for a fact that the people who were doing the interviews, and the experts, well, at least John, he's going to know fine well that these people are absolute fruitcakes, and it's just not fair. I really wish that they brought people on the show who were really interested in love and people who weren't absolute psychos. Like, I watched Love Island to start off with for the first two seasons, and it was fine. And as it went on, people were coming on and it was just all about getting followers on Instagram or getting signed up with some fashion brand or whatever. And it's just ridiculous, right? Like, people are just on it for attention. And it's definitely the same with Married at First Sight. And it's a shame because there's so many people in there who I genuinely think are looking for love. However, I've took a note of some of the contestants that I found particularly problematic. While I'm going through this last, you can let me know in the comments who your favourite contestants are, as well as the people that you would just drop kick right in the face. And I think you already know who my top three is going to be. Just so you know, I think the vast majority of the people on the show were problematic for different reasons. But the first person I've got on this list is John. Now, he talks about how they interviewed them, the interview process, and how they got to know their personalities and all that. And he's supposed to be an expert, right? Now, I don't know how much he's getting paid to appear on that show, and I don't know if people also hire him out with that show, but he's not giving himself a good look whatsoever. If he's trying to say that he interviews all these narcissists and psychopaths and all that, and doesn't realise that they've got personality disorders, then it's not looking very good for him. They must be paying him the big bucks to make himself look like an idiot. Now, he's sitting there and he gives them good advice at the time, right? But I really wish that the experts would give more input. Somebody in work was telling me that this is the first season that the experts have give, uh, given so much feedback to the couples. And I really wish that they would do more. Like, they can say, oh, do you think, how do you think you've been treating them, blah, 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 like psychologists or whatever, psychiatrists. But they should literally just turn around and say, do you know what, stop being a cunt. We didn't bring you on this show to be a narcissistic wee prick. We came on here to find love and see if you're not interested. Take yourself to fuck. Do you know what I mean? I don't know about you, but that would be a lot more interesting for me to watch. I don't know if you've noticed, but as I'm looking at the names going down this list, I've just realised that there's going to be a lot of swearing in this video. And I never advertise any of these videos as child-friendly, so don't bother moaning at me in the comments. If you've got children watching and you don't like them hearing swearing, then, you know, send them to the room or watch this video later. So, the next person I would like to talk about is Lyndall, right? I thought that Lyndall was such a nice person, and I really felt sorry for her, actually, and I thought, oh, she deserves to have love, blah, blah, blah. But it turns out that she actually had a long-term boyfriend before she went on the show. Now, this is reportedly, right? I don't know if in person, but there's a lot of reports that are saying that she had a long-term boyfriend before the show, who she actually split up with to go on here. Now, she's sitting there saying, oh, I didn't think I would ever find love, thought I was going to die young, blah, blah, blah. And then she dumped him to go on the show, right? As I said, I don't have evidence, but this is just a lot of reports coming through. So later on, after the show, she ended up hooking up with Josh, the older man, right? And I'll tell you this, i seen an interview with Josh, and when Josh was first on it, you don't expect everybody in the show to be, like, mind-blowingly beautiful, right? You want people on there who are obtainable, who are realistic, who are somebody who's like, that's a real person, do you know what I mean? You don't want them all to be supermodels. 
But when Josh was on, I kind of thought, why did they put him on the show? Do you know what I mean? Like, they want to put somebody on and the bride's going to come in and be like, oh my God, he's stunning. And I must admit that I didn't think that about Josh. Maybe because I don't fancy older men. However, I was watching an interview where he was talking about Lyndall and he was saying that after the show, the two of them got together and they'd kissed and stuff. They'd went out on a date and he went to where she lives to see if things would work out and they didn't end up working out. And online, a lot of people are saying that she still had a boyfriend during this time. Now, again, this was reportedly, I don't know, right? I don't know this for a fact. I'm not in her WhatsApp group chat or anything. I'm just letting you know the things that I've seen. And if you've seen anything similar, you can let me know in the comments. But when I was watching this interview with Josh, right, I was like, do you know what? He is actually a really good looking guy. He is. And listen to a guy who likes Disney, 10 out of 10. I absolutely love Josh. And during the show, when he was going with Melinda, I felt so bad for him. Like, I couldn't believe that they allowed it to even go that far. And when they let them leave, I was so relieved because I thought, she's taking things one step too far. But anyway, Lyndall, I, I thought that she was such a nice person. The only problem that I had with her during the show, before I even knew that she had a boyfriend, was when Cameron's mum says to him that because she was like so affectionate, it came across as being needy, right? And then she got upset over it. No, I'm sorry. I'd have been right over to where she lives or I'd have been right on the phone. I'd have been like, ah, I'm needy. Listen, hen, I've went through my whole life with this life-threatening disease and I've been close to my family and I've had love for my family and I've not had people telling me that I'm needy. And you know what? You're just a bitch, so don't ever fucking speak to me again. Don't let your partner's parents talk to you like crap. And I know that they weren't like officially boyfriend or girlfriend or anything, but if you're ever going out with somebody, if you're married or whatever, and their parents talk to you like that, just tell them to fuck off. I have got no time for people like that. The amount of people that I know in real life who don't like their husband or wife's family, and they still have them over for Christmas to keep the peace or whatever. No, I'm sorry. If I don't like you, you're not getting into my house. Do you know what I mean? And if he wants to come to your house for Christmas dinner, he can come, but you're not coming to mine. I feel really strongly about this. I don't know if you've noticed. So the next person is Harrison, obviously, right? He is a complete sociopath. And there's no way that John and the other experts didn't realise that he was a sociopath. Now, admittedly, Harrison, he's not my type, right? He wasn't bad looking. Out of all the grooms, I actually thought he was not too bad looking. But he was a total sociopath. And when... Bronte was off the show because she had like period pains or whatever and he was sitting there kidding on he was crying and the experts did say like we don't believe anything that you're saying right now why didn't they turn around and say why are you pretending to have emotion why are you showing us that you're a sociopath you're not even good at hiding it anymore right and I had an ex who used to try and gaslight the fuck out of me and I would actually laugh at him and I'd say you're not smart enough to gaslight me right in order to gaslight somebody, you have to have two brain cells to rub together. And I genuinely believed that for years, years of my life, that if you're going to try and gaslight somebody, you have to have even at least a baseline intelligence, even just the slightest bit of intelligence, right? But then I seen Bronte, and I was like, no, you actually don't have to be intelligent. You just have to meet somebody who's thicker than you. And Bronte is the weakest bitch, right? She's just such a weak-ass bitch. I was more annoyed at her for putting up with his crap. And I know that people are like, oh, she was on, she was looking for love. And I genuinely think that she was looking for love, right? I genuinely do. And she was trying so hard. But when somebody treats you like that, and then somebody that you don't even know, right? It's not as if she's been with this guy for years. And then the she feels as if they're separating, or she feels as if they're growing apart. And then she starts putting up with this behaviour. This was for a show, right? Somebody that she didn't even know, she had problems for day one and she still put up his crap and all the girls, well most of the women, were telling her he's a narcissist, he's trying to gaslight you, her sister was saying it and she's like no, 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 you're jealous, you're jealous, like no Bronte, nobody's jealousy, right, the thick as fuck and 90% of the problem in that relationship was Bronte, it wasn't even Harrison and the thing that even gets me even more confused now, right, is that Harrison now has a girlfriend outside the show, he's met somebody else, and 
I seen an interview with the girl he was supposedly seeing when he got married on the show and she was talking about how he is a sociopath, a narcissist, a gaslighter, blah blah blah, which we all knew. But the thing is, he's got a girlfriend now who's watched the show. Imagine sitting watching that show with your friends or family or even yourself, right, and thinking, oh Harrison, he's quite nice, watching how he's treated Bronte and then going out and meeting him in a club and being like, oh, there's that guy who married at first night, right? Oh, my God. And then he asks you for your number and you actually give it to him. What the fuck, man? She must be thicker than Bronte. You'd be like that. Are you for real? No, fuck off, weirdo. You're not going to try and gaslight me. I don't understand it. Is, is it like a fetish for some people? Like, I know that some people like to be, like, humiliated, right? It's like a... Now that people like to be humiliated, like guys like to be dressed up as dogs and stuff. But maybe some people enjoy being gaslighted and treated like an idiot. I don't know. It's not for me. I mean, if that's something for you, then you can let me know in the comments. But it's a pass, actually, for me. The next person on the list is Alicia. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if the experts could actually tell how much of a fruitcake she was. They brought her in knowing that she was really religious and they gave her a chance. Now, even though... A lot of religious people are absolutely cracked beyond repair. Some of them are all right, right? There's some of them out there who are nice people, who actually try and be nice to other people, and they can believe in God, and they can believe in their faith without being absolute crackpots. However, Alicia is not one of the people. She is insane. And it wasn't even to do with preaching God or whoever it is that she believes in, but it, her personality was shocking. The fact that she was leading him on making him think that, oh, we could be together and all that, and then saying, oh, you'll see me every Wednesday and every second weekend or whatever it was, and she waited to say that in front of your pals, and he's just sitting there like that. I thought, do you know what, hen? You deserve an absolute fucking slap in the face. She was a bitch. And Duncan was so nice. Now, as we know, this was edited. Do you know what I mean? Like, nobody's saying that Duncan is perfect. However, um, the other day I had watched a video about Elisa, and... She was saying that she was now seeing a psychiatrist and after the show she suddenly got sacked for a job that she'd been in for like seven years and she thinks that it's something to do with the show. Now, honestly, right, I don't think it's fair for people to go on these shows. Even Harrison, right, who's an absolute cuntbag, doesn't deserve to go back to his job and get sacked because he's a dick, right? Because I've worked with people in real life who are way worse than him. And they don't get sacked for it. And it's not very fair. Unless somebody goes on a show and they're blatantly racist or they blatantly discriminate against people, then I okay sack them because I'm not having that in my workplace. I'm not working with people who are racist and discriminate. However, if you're a gaslighter or if you're just a dick, like the way Alicia was, I don't think that it's fair to sack her for your job. However, I absolutely feel sorry for her child. I hope that um, the dad's more sane than she is. Since the show, it's reported that Duncan is supposedly seeing Evelyn, who's an absolute legend, right? I loved Evelyn. I loved the fact that she was just, she just said what she thought. She always pulled up Harrison and she pulled up the people who were talking shit and she held them accountable for their actions. And she was one of the only people on the show who ever done it. She wasn't the only one, but she always done it every single time. And she spoke in mind. And the guy that she was with, that Rupert, I mean, he seemed like a nice guy, but he obviously wasn't, he just wasn't ready to go into that show. I don't think that he should ever go on TV again, honestly. He wasn't a bad guy, but I think that she's a much better match with Duncan, and I actually hope they end up working out. If you find out any news about that, you can let me know in the comments, because I'm very interested to know. Yes, my life is that sad, I'm actually interested to know. So, the next person on the list is going to be Dan. Dan, right. When Dan married Sandy, at first I was like, oh, he's a really nice guy, as everybody thought he was a nice guy. And one of my friends in work had seen a spoiler on TikTok, and she didn't even watch the show, but she was just telling me a spoiler. And she was saying, oh, did you hear that Dan went with somebody, or like Dan cheated on Sandy, or Dan done something to Sandy? Like, and I was like, what? No, no way. Must be somebody else, right? And literally, I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what she was saying. But then as it was going on and I started to see his attitude change, I was like, oh, I, I can see where this is going. However, right, when Dan was talking to Sandy and she was saying to him, oh, you're always out the house and, 
like you're never home, you never spend time with me and all that. And he was sitting telling her about how he likes to go out hikes and he likes to go to the gym and keep fit and everything. I thought to myself, he's out all the many all the hours right hiking or going to the gym or running or whatever. And I thought, now I've not seen Dan with his top off, right, thankfully. But he doesn't look like somebody who's as fit as what he's making out. I'm not trying to fat shame, right, because I'm fat. But I don't make out as if I go to the gym for like eight hours a day. I had a cheek to turn around to her and say, if I spent as much time at the gym as you do in front of the TV, I would be absolutely stacked or absolutely built or whatever. And I was like, you would be like that if you spent all that time at the gym that you're saying that you're there anyway. He's an absolute liar, right? But then he turned around and says to her, oh, I'm in beast mode, babe. I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, beast mode? You know how you get the guys and they're like, oh, I'm the alpha? Or even women, women do, I'm the alpha. See, as soon as somebody tells me that they're an alpha, I'm like, that fuck off. Dan is a closet gay, right? Now, I've got nothing against gay people, but if you're gay, don't come out and make out as if you pure love all these skinny, muscly lasses. I know he's got a daughter, but he's, he's definitely 100% wanting a cock in his ass. And not only that, when Claire actually turned around and said that to him, and he gave her the death stare, and she's like, oh, why don't you go and buttfuck each other? And he gave her the death stare, right? Oh, my God, it so reminded me of my ex as well, the one who used to shine gaslight me. He would give me this look as well, right? He'd give me this, like, stare. I can't even do it. And I'd, and I'd laugh, and I'd be like, are you trying to intimidate me? No. It's like when a wee tiny cute pup, like, will bark at you, and you're like, oh, my God, it's trying to be scary. No, it's not going to happen, Dan. Okay, sit down. Maybe you find yourself a boyfriend and put a smile on your face. I mean, when it comes to Sandy, I feel as if she really did try her best. But she always spoke about how she liked to keep fit and go to the gym and all that. But yet on the show, she never once says to me, well, I'll come to the gym with you. Or I'm going to go to the gym as well. Do you know what I mean? You can, you can want to keep fit and not go to the gym. But when she used to talk to Claire, she used to say that she liked to go to the gym and keep fit and stuff. But yet you never seen her do it. Like if he was saying to me, oh, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go out hikes and that, and I was into that sort of thing, I would have said, oh, I'll come with you. Do you know what I mean? But to be honest, I'm glad she didn't because he wasn't even worth her time. He was an absolute cock. Melissa was obviously problematic for day one. She was an absolute sex pest. And the way she used to speak to Josh was vile. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but in recent years, particularly on TikTok, I've spoke about this before, where women are like sexual predators, right? And a lot of people go, oh, men love that, men would love that. Men shouldn't have to love that, right? You shouldn't have to force yourself upon somebody else, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman. Like on TikTok, you get lasses who maybe dance, maybe they're wearing like shorts and a bikini top, and a guy makes a comment, and people are like, oh, you're a sleaze, you're a sleaze bag, right? And then other people would be like, oh, she's obviously doing it for attention. She's obviously dancing in a bikini for attention. Even though guys are allowed to dance about with their top off, right? But that's for another video. And men will say something and then they get attacked. However, when you watch videos, and I don't get them a lot because they give me the absolute boat, but you get guys dancing with their tops off. Some older guys, most of them are way too young for, for my taste. I don't, I don't even want to see them dancing about in their shorts. But you get women in their 40s. I'm, I'm nearly 40, right? You get women in their 40s and 50s and they're leaving these comments. Like, I, I can't even think of something off the top of my head. But sexually explicit comments that a, a man would never get away with, right? And women are just, they're too forceful. Especially older women on younger boys is very worrying. And actually, on TikTok as well, there's a guy and he comes out with all his muscles and all that all greased up. And then his brothers and his dad come out and you get people leaving comments like, oh, daddy, what, I'd like a shot of daddy and all that. And I'm like, Do you know that? Stop, right? See if you've got a husband or a boyfriend, go and give him that energy. Don't be writing things like that on TikTok because it's an absolute redneck. Anyway, Melissa, she's needing a psychiatrist. Or she's needing to go to a sex therapist or she's needing to go to somebody. Because it's all fine and well being a highly sexual person and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not against anybody who's a sex worker or does only fans or anything. But if you feel the need to force yourself upon somebody, like to, to that degree, she's obviously got serious self-confidence issues and she needs help. The next person is Taylor. And I think that we can all agree 100% 
she is an absolute cunt, right? Now, I say the word cunt a lot. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. It's not offensive to me. If somebody says to me, you're a cunt, I'm like, right, okay. It's literally like one of the least offensive words that I could be called. But a lot of people really take offence to it, right? To me, it's just like somebody saying, stop being a fanny or stop being a dick, right? It doesn't have like a harsh meaning. However, when I'm saying it about Taylor, that is what I literally mean. She's one of the worst people that I've ever witnessed on TV in my life. Now, I haven't watched any of the other seasons and I'm sure some of them are worse. But she's an absolute bitch bag, right? Like, Hugo, when they when they went on their honeymoon and she was saying, oh, you can sleep at the window or whatever. No, Hugo should have stood up for himself and he should have said, look, I'm sleeping in this bed and if you don't like it, you can sleep at the window or you can ask for another room, but I'm sleeping in this bed and I'm not coming near you, right? The bed is massive. We can put pillows down the middle and if you don't like it, sleep on the fucking floor. Do you know what I mean? It's all right for men to stand up for themselves. It's not all about women power or girl power or whatever other crap they're coming out with. It's equality for all. And there's no way that he should have been sleeping underneath a cold window when she had a massive bed to herself. She's an absolute bitch, right? And then she ended up fancying Cameron, who was like a greasy, minging wee rodent, right? Scumbag. And as I was watching it, and you, obviously you could tell that they liked each other, and then when it came out that they had been messaging each other and stuff, and I was like, why does she even like him? Like, I okay, she's a complete bitch, right? But she wasn't bad looking. I mean, she was quite attractive. And I had seen videos after the show of her out partying, and people were saying, oh, that's where she belongs. She, she belongs with people that have got no class and all that. Like, you're allowed to be young and out partying. You're allowed to be old and out partying. It doesn't mean that you've got no class. But Taylor literally has no class. She's an absolute fucking bitch. And when I was thinking about it the other day, when I was actually thinking about making this video, I was thinking about uh, Cameron's mum and how she was talking about Lyndall. And obviously Cameron's mum is a complete bitch as well, right? And some people, it's a thing, right? Like some women will fancy men that remind them of their dad and some men will like women who remind them of their mum. And that's obviously what's going on here because Taylor is an absolute fucking bitch. And him and Cam her and Cameron's mum, they'll end up being BFFs. So the two of them can go and bitch together. Absolute fucking cowbags. So the next person who in my mind was actually pretty insignificant, but I've added them anyway, was Shannon. Because Shannon was still in love with his ex. And then he was talking to Caitlin, like complete crap, right? Now, I thought that Caitlin was a really nice lassie and she really tried to stand up for herself throughout the show. But then when he was saying to her, oh, if you'd have blown me away, I'd have forgot all about my ex, I'd have been like, ah, if I'd have blown you away, when's the last time you washed your fucking spotty ass face? He looked like a greasy wee prick. Like, he had nice eyes, right? But I'm, I wash my hair once a week, right? I've been off work and I've not washed my hair for like a week and a half. You can see it's dirty, right? But I wouldn't show up to my wedding looking like this. I wouldn't go on national television looking like this. I'm on my YouTube channel. It's not as if I've got millions of people watching me. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't really put effort in because I don't need to. He was on that show looking like that and then turning around and telling her that she didn't blow him away. What a joke, man. I didn't even look up to see what his ex looks like, but I bet she and she's not as good looking as Caitlin. He was a joke. And, like, I know that people can have bad skin, right? And it's just to do with, like, their genetics or it can be do with a lot of things and they can wash their face. But he literally looked as if he'd never washed his face a day in his life. It was vile. It was like, oh, give me the absolute book. So the next, the last person actually that I'm going to talk about who's problematic, as you know, that was like most of them, was Adam, right? Obviously he cheated on Janelle with Claire. But one of the big, biggest problems that I found with Adam was that at the wedding when Janelle's brother was saying something, I can't remember what it was, but he was standing up at the altar and the brother was like, oh, blah, 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 that's a red flag or whatever. He didn't even know him, right? And Adam obviously was nervous, right? And he was standing up there and he was like, mm, like trying to be nice. I'm sorry, but if I was on a show like that and somebody's brother turned around who didn't even know me, he'd never spoke to me a day in their life and they're like, oh, that's a red flag, I'd be like that. Fuck off. See if you don't want to be here or if you think you're going to be a wide wee dick, take yourself to fuck. He was an absolute joke. You can have a supportive family, right? You can have a strong family network. 
and you can have people who want to look out for you. But I genuinely believe that when somebody's brother, father, mother, sister or whatever is so protective over them to that degree, they absolutely want a bit of them. Do you know what I mean? He absolutely wants to dick fuck out his own sister and it's vile. It's completely vile. And I kind of felt sorry for Janelle, but at the same time I didn't really because she was talking about how in her culture it's important for people to be focused on their career and all that and it was just about money, money, money. That's not for me, right? Like, if I if I like somebody and they've got a job or they've not got a job or they've got a lot of money or they've not, it, ma- it literally makes no difference to me. I okay, it can stop you from doing certain things in your relationship, but if you love that person, it shouldn't matter at the end of the day. But anyway, Janelle's reportedly seen Jesse now, and I actually do hope that the two of them work out. But Adam was a complete dick, right? But at the same time, Janelle's brother was even worse in my opinion. The fact that he was just treating him like that and he didn't even know him, I'd have been like, ah, ugh, fuck off. So, the only people that I've not really covered in this video was Melinda and Leighton, who I thought I thought were quite nice. Melinda obviously was mega confident at the start, and there's nothing wrong with being overconfident. Do you know what I mean? She was like, oh, I'm a 10 and a bad day. Okay, fine. If you think that you're a 10 and a bad day, fine. And I genuinely, at the start, didn't even think that Leighton was attractive. As the show went on, I started to see why they chose him. And I think the two of them actually make a good couple. Um, Tani and Ollie. I love Tani and Ollie. I thought that Ollie was hilarious. And I loved it when he did all his impressions and stuff. And I thought he was really funny. And I really wish, actually, that they would do other shows where they, they bring back the people who were treated in such a way. Like, the people who were treated like shit. And gave them another chance to really meet somebody, somebody who hasn't been picked because they're a narcissist or because they're a spoiled bitch or because they're just a blatant cunt. So overall, right, I really did, it doesn't sound like it, but I really did love this season of Married at First Sight. However, I think that in future, I wish that in future, they would make it more real. And when they're interviewing the contestants and when they get on the show, they should make them sign a contract that says, if it turns out that you are seeing somebody at the start of the show, if you're seeing somebody throughout the show, like if it turns out that you're actually in a relationship during the show, then you're going to have to pay a fine and make it a big fine, right? Make it like £100,000 or something because it would stop people running the pass. I wish that they would stop bringing people on the show deliberately because they're narcissists or because they're psychopaths or because they're sociopaths or whatever because... I okay, it causes drama, but you're going to get drama through normal people anyway. Just the day-to-day, like, relationships with people causes drama. And there's no need to bring in people who are fake, who just want attention, who want Instagram followers, or whatever it is that they're wanting. I really wish that they'd bring on people who just really want to find love, because if more of them worked out at the end, I think that the show would be even more popular, and it wouldn't be such a joke. Basically, I wish they would make reality TV more real. Stop scripting everything. I don't want to watch scripted reality. I would watch The Only Way is Essex if that's what I wanted. I don't want to watch something that's totally fake. If I wanted that, I would watch a soap. I want to see actual reality. I want you to bring people in who are really looking for love, not looking for followers, not looking, not just looking for attention or whatever. People who are really looking for love and then more of the relationships would work out and it would just be so much better. It's the same with Big Brother, it's the same with all the reality shows, it was the same with Temptation Island. They brought in people and they used to say to them, like, oh, you need to hook up with this person or act like you're in love with this person or act like you really like this person or that you're in a fight, just to get some drama. If you were really good at making TV and if you were really good at editing and producing, you wouldn't need fakeness, you'd be able to make something out of what's actually real. And it would be so much better. And a lot more people would watch it because it wouldn't be such a joke. It wouldn't be so ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? It would just make much more sense and they would make a lot more money as well. But let me know in the comments what you thought and let me know if you've ever watched Maths before, be it Maths Australia, UK or whatever other country it's on. And let me know what your favourite season was. And let me know, do you think that they should make it more real and stop just creating drama? Because in the end, I really think it ends up wasting it. And it really puts people in danger. Because what happens if Bronte had really fell in love with Harrison, which I think it was she was at one point, 
and then Harrison enjoyed like playing games with her and decided to keep her around for a long time. Like he could end up really damaging her, right? Psychologically, physically. Like Dan with his death stare, right, is his stupid death stare. I mean, even though he's not intimidating, there's nothing stopping him from turning around and actually punching somebody in the face at some point, do you know what I mean? Like it's just not right. Let me know in the comments what you think. I don't know how long this video's been on. It's probably like an hour. Sorry, you know what I'm like once I got on a rant. But if you made it to this point, congratulations. I don't know how you done it. I nearly didn't even make it to this point. But if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bye.